Well, Dave, this is this is uh, Severe Weather Awareness Week, and in, in particular, Severe Weather Awareness Day, and it's just the uh, it's just the, the the time of the year when we. Uh, just encourage people to just to remind them actually that uh, you know severe weather is right around the corner and uh, the moisture will come back and everybody thinks it's uh, you know it's it's kind of been a little bit of a drought and uh, uh, but realistically we're always dry this time of the year and, and uh, that will come to an end. to there. Speaking of that, where uh, where are we at as far as moisture with normal usually? Uh, well, I don't know exactly. You know, we had, we had all that. We had all that. We had that rain um, back a few weeks ago that actually put us above normal for the at that point above normal for the year. But we don't typically we don't typically get much rain this time of the year. So I, I don't know exactly where we stand. But actually, we're not that much drier than usual. I guess that was the okay. point I was I was trying to make. And and you know, the moisture will come back. And, it seems and we will, that way. It, it, it does. <laughs> but every year we get you know every year we get we get phone calls. But while we're so dry, we we'll really we only average about a about a quarter of an inch of rain in January uh, as a climatological average and and uh, just a little bit more than that in February and then of course as we head into March and April we tend to we tend to ramp up on our on our on our average precipitation but usually along with that precipitation comes thunderstorms and as you know you know usually uh, uh, during this time of year a lot of those storms are severe with large hail and high winds and, and sometimes tornadoes and it's events like this where uh, we get to talk to a, a significant number of, of folks and kind of in a, in a kind of in a fun way you know, remind them that uh, that it's that time of year and that severe weather is on the way, and just just to have a just to have a plan in place, have a weather radio, uh, know what you would do if a tornado was approaching your your home or business, and that's basically get get in a basement if you have one, or or go to uh, an interior room on the lowest floor of your home, uh, hopefully without windows. So uh, small small closets are really good. Uh, bathrooms are excellent choices if there if there are no windows, um, because the the number one killer in tornadoes is flying debris. So we want to stay away from windows. Okay. Uh, now, uh, a lot of spotter training going this type of time right. of year. If someone wanted to be a spotter, what's the process for that? Well, uh, spotter training. I think a lot of people kind of have the impression that you can just go to a spotter training class and, and be a spotter. And and going to a spotter training class is an excellent idea. But but really, David, as, as you know, especially, uh, you know, you, uh, a lot of times when you're out in the field observing observing storms, many times they don't look much like what you what you see in textbooks and, and the training you get. So really, it's an ongoing it's an ongoing process of attending of attending training, uh, making observations when possible. Uh, you, you know whether whether you decide to be a what, what we call a point spotter, where that, that's just at your home or business, or whether you tend to be a mobile spotter or a, or a chaser, so to speak, where you actually try to find, you know, try to drive up to where the storms are. Yeah, it's just an ongoing process of education, uh, uh, taking video, reviewing that video, and, um, and reading. Uh, we have a lot of spotter training guides, a lot of information on the internet, and then actually coming out to spotter training, where you actually have a, a, a meteorologist who's who is experienced. In uh, severe weather observation and storm structure, so it's a it's an ongoing it's an ongoing process. Okay, I'm going to ask you the big question. I'm sure everybody's asked, "What's your crystal ball forecast for tornado season?" <laughs> well, you know we've been in this been in a little bit of a drier pattern than normal, and uh, the most of the models that the National Weather Service, that the Climate Analysis Branch of the Weather Service uses to predict uh, whether we're going to be, we're kind of a La Nina pattern right now, which I know a lot of people have heard about, a little weak La Nina, and, and, it, and that's the models that the Climate Analysis Center runs, uh, they all pretty much show this trend that we should be trending to a, a more of an El Nino type um, of pattern by, by summer, and we find a lot of times uh, in the springtime when we have that transition from a La Nina to an El Nino that we, that we do have an active, uh, pretty active severe weather season, and I believe that was the case in, uh, in 2007. When we had a very active season, and we were we were transitioning from La Nina to El Nino, so uh, we average about 18 tornadoes a year. So, if that pans out, perhaps we'll have more, uh, maybe 20 to 30 tornadoes this year across the South Plains region. Okay.